Okay, hello and welcome to this just quick technique tutorial. And what I'm going to be doing today is just showing you how you can use stencils and a structure paste to add some really interesting kind of background texture to your projects. So what I'm working on as a project base is just a hardbacked journal here. And then what I'm going to be using is for the structure paste on this one is it's Powertex's own, so it's called Easy Structure. But there's loads of structure pastes out there that you'll find. You can even make your own. Um, you can mix things like sand into your fabric hardness. And again, that will kind of thicken them up and um, make them into more of a paste that you could use this way. And that'll give you quite a nice sort of grainy texture to it as well. This one is super, super smooth. So that's why it's, it's really nice for going through stencils because it does go through very, very smoothly. I've got then a palette knife that I'm going to use to apply it with. And I've got some stencils here. So these... I'm going to be using to make a kind of fossil themed journal and what I tend to do is I apply these as sort of background texture and I'll put it over possibly quite a bit of the area and then I'm going to add other things onto it so I'm going to add my fabrics add my embellishments and things like that so a lot of it might end up getting covered up but as I always say if you've done any of my workshops or anything like that I say don't leave any blank flat spaces on your projects so this just gives you the option to leave some bits that are a little bit sort of less textured I suppose but they still have some texture so they're not not a flat surface. So these come from, so this is another bit of a tip for you, these are actually from a larger stencil so this is it's, it's quite a big one a 12 by 12 inch stencil which is quite unwieldy and really quite hard to use when you keep it like that and because they are all individual elements it's not like it's a pattern that you're putting on as a whole thing the easiest thing to do is just chop them up just get some scissors and cut them up into the individual pieces and then they're a lot easier to work with. So that's kind of tip one for working with your stencils. Okay, so another tip I've got just off screen that you can't quite see there is have a little tub of water available. Um, that's just so once I've finished putting the stencil through there, there's going to be some of the structure paste left on my stencils. That does dry and it does stick on quite strongly. So to be able to use them again, you want them to be nice and clean and nice and flat again. So I'm just going to pop them straight into that little tub of water once I've finished with them. Also make sure you've got some kitchen roll for wiping any excess off your palette knife because again it, it does stick on there and it can be really hard to get off once it has dried. You can probably see the remnants of some of it on there and that I'd have to give that a really really good scrub probably with some uh, some wire to, to really get it off. Okay so I'm ready to just arrange my stencils as I want them. So I'm going to pop them in various places. I'll probably clean off maybe a couple of the smaller ones and put some more on somewhere else. Just turn that one around so I can squeeze that one in at the top. Then what you might find is easiest to, to apply and keep them in place so they don't kind of move about whilst you're adding the um, structure paste through them is just a little bit of masking tape. What I tend to do is just put it on one edge like that so you can still kind of flip it up. You've got it like a little bit of a hinge on there. So I'm just going to put some little bits of tape on those to assist me. Right, so now I'm ready to add the structure paste through. Okay, so the structure paste is a really nice kind of thick white substance. If you leave it standing for a bit, this one has been standing for a while, it'll sometimes go a little bit watery on the top, so give it a little bit of a, a stir around. It does obviously dry in the air, so you want to be keeping the lid on when you're not using it. Now, the way that I apply it is I want to get a nice dollop onto the end of my um, palette knife and ideally I want this to kind of cover that whole bit so I want to get enough on there that's going to go through it takes probably less than you think to go through the stencils and what I need to do if I go for this one first is try and hold that down quite nice and flat and then the way I tend to work is pop that just off the area that you're wanting it to go through and then you're just going to drag that across nice and smoothly just lift up on the other side and I can go back with that I've still got plenty on my palette knife and I can just drag that back over there around there and just on that last little bit there okay now what you probably don't want to do as I say this does dry very fast and actually if I carried on going and did all of those whilst I've still got that sitting there it will start drying onto the stencil so what I do need to do 
is kind of lift them off as I go. But then you just need to be very careful as you're working around because that is still wet. So I'm just going to wipe the excess off my palette knife just onto the edge of the pot first. And then I'm just going to take that off on a piece of kitchen roll at this point. So obviously if it dries onto there, you haven't got a smooth flat edge on the base anymore. So to lift this off, I'm going to use that, as I say, as a bit of a hinge. So rather than trying to lift it flat off like that, I'm going to lift it and hinge it up. So I just grab that edge, hinge it up, and that should give me a really nice clean stencil there. So I'm just going to pop the masking tape off the edge and that's just going straight into that little tub of water as I said. And I'm just going to carry on and do that with the other ones I've got there. Those two smaller ones I can probably do together because they are only dinky. So if I get another dollop of my structure paste. I work out which one to do first so that it doesn't interfere too much with the others. I'm just going to pop that actually on that one so I've got slightly less on my palette knife. Again, make sure you've got it. I only really, for these ones, because they're very small, I only want it towards the end of the palette knife, not all the way up it, or I'm going to be smearing it over the book as well. So again, I'm just going to pop that to the edge and just smooth that across. Oops, that's exactly what I said would happen, is I've got a big dollop there on the book as well. Don't worry. Just clean. Always get into the habit of just cleaning that off your palette knife as soon as um, you can. Then I am just going to lift that one and remove it. And then I'm just going to use my palette knife to take that little splodge off. So it might not come off completely, there'll be a little bit of remnant there, but it won't be so much that it's going to cause any huge issues when I carry on with my design. Okay, and then I'll just do the other two as well. Okay, so the next kind of little tip when working with your stencils just to kind of look after them is you're obviously going to need to wash them. I want to use a couple of them again, so I need to clean them just before I can because they're obviously they're wet and they've got the, the structure paste kind of all over. So in your little tub of water, just use your fingers to gently rub over the surface to get any off. It will come off very easily if it's gone straight into the water. And then to clean them, often if I'm not using them again, I'll just pop them out on a piece of, of kitchen roll and let them dry naturally. If I want to use them again, what I'm going to do is just pop it into the kitchen roll and just gently dab it down to dry it. Don't be tempted to kind of scrub them dry. What you'll end up doing there is if you've got any that have got, some of them, these are all joined, but if you've got any where it's got a loose, so I guess kind of those tiny little pieces on the edge, if you've got some of those where they're actually loose, you'll end up bending them and that can really spoil them and, and mean you can't get your paste over flat anymore. So they dry very easily. So I'm gonna use that one again and just the other little, the small trilobite. So again, just going to pop that in there after I've taken it all off just with my fingers in the water. Warm water is easier to work with again than cold water. Just going to dab that off and there we've got those ready to use again. So I'm just going to arrange where I want those. Remember with your stencils they will work both ways so I can turn it over. So it's quite good certainly for the ammonites so they're not all going the same way if you want some going the opposite direction. So I'm going to pop one of those just in there. So just another little bit of tape just to hold the edge down. Again, remembering to steer well away from the wet parts. If you want things to overlap or you need to get them closer, what you'd be wanting to do then is just let those dry. They don't take too long. Probably, certainly half an hour they would be dry. Um, or you could use a hairdryer just to speed it up a little bit and then you can get them on a bit bit quicker. But for this, I'm just gonna pop them on in different places so they don't need to touch. And then I'm just gonna do the same again for those.
Okay, so now I've got there some of my nice background texture. I'm just going to let that dry, as I say, for um, sort of 20 to 30 minutes. Just let it dry naturally. By then, it, it should have um, dried off completely, and I'll be able to paint over the top. So what I'll be doing is just giving it a coat of the fabric hardener, just as a paint over the top of it, and then I can start working on it, and I'll show you the finished product once I'm done. Okay, so as promised, there's my finished journal with my stenciled fossils on. So I used the grey fabric hardener for my base and I used some t-shirt fabric up here, some moulded fossils as well just to tie in with my stenciled fossils um, and some kind of stringy fabric as well just to kind of blend it all in together a little bit. And then you can see how they've highlighted really really nicely even though they are just quite a light texture on there, they don't stand up massively. Just with careful dry brushing over the top and highlighting you can really make those pop out and give you some really interesting effects on surfaces.